Our sources have told us that Blackstone is in talks for more than $15 billion in new funds tied to secondaries. This is a business where limited partners, partners in private equity firms and other alternative assets, sell their stakes to other investors. Why are they doing this? Why is this such a heated market right now? Well, first, obviously, I can't comment on any fundraising activity. But what I would say is this. Uh, investors are looking at this market uh, where we provide liquidity to an otherwise long-term illiquid asset class. And this market has grown significantly. 20 years ago, this market was roughly $1.5 billion of volume annually. This year, we expect the market to surpass $100 billion for the very first time. And so when you think about what this market really does, it provides a service to investors that want to get out of a long-term asset class. And the way I would explain it is very simple. Imagine an investor is taking a journey on a highway with a destination in mind, but that journey is pretty far along, it's, it's far away. And so the secondary market enables those investors to get out, it enables them to have an exit should they change their mind. They want to go to a totally different destination, they want to take a break, the, the journey is too long. And so that's why this market has garnered a lot of attention lately. What do you say to people that say that this is just the market top? Um, look, without a doubt, valuations are relatively high, but I would tell you for the highest quality companies with secular tailwinds, I would argue that these valuations are appropriate. In fact, those companies will grow further into those, those valuations. But I think that speaks to and illuminates part of the value of being a secondary buyer. Um, as, as a secondary buyer, we typically buy funds that are six to 10 years old, 90% funded. And so if you think we're at a top or you don't think we're at a top, what I would tell you is six to 10 years from now, which is when we'll be buying funds that have exposure to these investments, we will have a good view of whether they were right or wrong. It doesn't matter ultimately where, where that stands today, if it's toppy or not, six to 10 years from now, we'll have a good view and we'll be able to buy assets that can provide good risk adjusted returns. Vern, your business, the reason it's interesting is you have so much clarity into different funds across different firms and private equity, real estate, credit. When you're looking across that universe, especially credit and real estate, what are you worried about? What are kind of the, the, the signs that investors should be concerned about? Well, look, you know, our group has interest in over 4,100 distinct private equity funds managed by over 1,500 GPs. So we sit in a pretty unique spot. We have a good view of everything. In terms of what to worry about, look, we don't, we don't focus too much on things that we should be worried about. We focus on high quality assets that have staying power. And so, you know, with that said, in the real estate space, clearly retail is facing some headwinds as e-commerce, you know, and the move to e-commerce takes over. And that was really expedited by COVID. So people are buying more things online. But I would say generally, we, we don't focus on things that, you know, that are out there that we can't control. We focus on what we can control. And that is buying assets and getting exposure to funds that have high quality assets with stable, strong balance sheets that have staying power. That means when COVID happens, or the global financial right. crisis happens, or 9-11 happens, they make it through that. Vern, how does coming back to the office play into your investment thesis? Well, look, I think, you know, for me personally, I'll speak, I'll start with me. It's great being back in the office. You know, many of you all know that Blackstone is back in the office. I started coming back in the office mid-July of last year, and I've got to tell you, we are better together. It's incredible for culture. Mm -hmm training, mentorship, sponsorship. So I've got to believe in many companies, it's the same thing. And so people getting back to work in a safe, healthy manner where they feel comfortable getting back to work, I think it's great for the economy. I think it's great for our underlying companies. Right. And frankly, it's great for the funds we have exposure to.